everyone, my name's Heidi Postel. Welcome back to A Plus Maths. Today I'd like to start to do the topic called networks and we'll start with an introduction of all the terminology and all the symbols that you need to know so that you can understand what's going on. The topic of networks is really about getting from one place to another and how many ways there are to do that, the shortest way to do it, the quickest way to do it, the most efficient way to do it, and if along the way you can stop without slowing anything down. This is, can be very, very useful for planning trips or when you're building a construction and planning the timing that it's going to take. That's what it's used for in real life. So basically, a network is a bunch of points and lines. Let's have a look. This would be called a network. These are called the edges, they're the lines, the edges are the lines, and these are called the vertices, the dots. A loop is an edge that joins the same vertex and will look like this. That is a loop. It is quite important to understand that the network that I have drawn on the board has five vertices and one, two, three, four, five edges, which means that any other network that I draw that has five edges and five vertices will be considered to be the same network. So for example, if I were to draw this network, that would be considered to be the same network as this network because it has five vertices and five edges. Also notice that the edges don't have to be straight. And it is possible to have two edges coming out of the same vertices. It can be useful when we're doing questions to label the vertices. And you can label them A, B, C, D and E. The order is not important, unless of course the question has given you the letters already on the vertices and then obviously it's important so that they know what you're describing. If you have a vertice that is not connected to any other vertice in the network, let's just say you had another point here, F, that would be called an isolated vertex. At the moment he's not connected to anything, so he's isolated. Now we need to know how to describe the degree of the vertex. The degree of the vertex just means how many ways there are of going out of that vertex. So let's have a look at question number one. If I have a look at B, there are two roads going out of B. So the degree of B, and you write it like that, is two. If I have a look at C, there are two roads coming out of C. So the degree of C is 2. And if I have a look at A, there is 1, 2, 3, 4. Even though the loop turns into itself, it is still considered to be two ways going out of A. So degree of A would be 2 plus the 2 for the loop, which is 4. You don't obviously need to write down loop, but I'm just writing it down so that you can remember. Let's have a look down here, see if you can do it while I'm doing it. The degree of A, I'll do them in alphabetical order. The degree of A is two. The degree of B will also be two. The degree of C is two. The degree of D, have to be careful because of the loop, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 4 because of the loop, remember the loop counts as 2. And the degree of E is 1, 2, 3, 4. Just don't forget that the loops count as 2. All networks will look different. And depending on how many of the edges and vertices are connected, 
will depend on how you can describe or call that network. Let's go through the different types of names. You can have connected networks or non-connected networks, or you can have isomorphic. And we need to know what all the different types of networks are. So connected graphs have no breaks in the edges. And we can connect every vertice through the edges. So let's have a look at these five different examples and decide if they're connected or not connected. Remember, if all the dots are connected by edges, it's connected. If all the dots are not connected by edges, then it's not connected. It's as simple as that. So this one here would be connected because all the dots, all the vertices are connected by an edge. Remember, the vertices are the corners and the edges are the lines. This one here is also connected because all the dots can be joined by one of the lines. Even though those two aren't connected to each other, they're still connected by an edge to one of the vertices. So this one is connected. This one over here, these two are connected, but this one over there, he's an isolated vertex. And if he's isolated, then they are not connected. You cannot get to that dot or that vertex without jumping over without an edge. That's a problem. That means that it's not connected. Down here, all the vertices have an edge coming out of them, joining the other ones. So this is connected. These vertices here, they all have an edge coming out of them, but these two, this one is not connected to anything over here. So if I wanted to join those three with those two, I would need to jump without an edge. And that's a problem. So they are not connected. Our next type of network is what's called isomorphic. I know the name sounds really complicated, but all it means is that we have rearranged one network to make it into another. But the structure of the network should stay the same. So we have three main rules which helps us to decide if it's the same. The three rules that we need to follow to test to, test to see if it's isomorphic are that they have to have the same number of vertices and edges. So we check that first. Then we need to check that corresponding vertices have the same degree. So go around and see what, what all the vertices are and then check that the second one has the same. And we need to check that corresponding edges will connect to the same vertices. Let's have a look at some examples. The first thing I'm going to do is to write down the degree of every vertex. So here I have, I'll do the degree in red. So the degree of E will be 2. And because I'm doing it in a different colour, I'm not going to write all the notation. I'll just put the number next to it to make it easier and quicker for us. This one is 2, this one is 2, this one is 2, and this one is 2. So the degree of all my vertices is 2. Let's just have a look and see how many vertices and how many edges I have. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vertices. I might write it in the middle. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 edges. Let's come over here to the second one and let's do how many vertices and edges first. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vertices and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 edges. So that takes care of rule number one, which tests to see whether or not I have the same number of vertices and edges, which I do. If I have a look at number two, we've got to make sure that the degrees of all the vertices are the same. Remember, we're doing that in red. So the degree here is two, two. It's, remember, it's just how many lines coming out of it. That has degree two, and that has degree two. So we know that rule number two works. Looking good so far. Number three is a little bit more tricky. It says that you have to make sure that the corresponding edges will connect to the same vertices. Now, what does that actually mean? If I have a look here at E, you have two roads, let's say, coming out of E. Where do they connect to? They connect to B and C. So if I come over here to E, E should be connecting B and C. And as you can see, because E here connects A and D, and here connects B and C, it does not satisfy rule number three, 
that says that corresponding edges will connect the same vertices. So these two are not isomorphic. Let's have a look at the next one. We have one, two, three, four, five vertices. We start by counting the vertices. So we have five vertices. And how many edges? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. Let's find out how many degrees each vertex has. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's count how many vertices and edges. One, two, three, four, five. Five vertices and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. Looking good so far. And let's have a look at the degree of each vertex. This is two, one, two, three, four. That's a problem already, isn't it? Three and three. Well, I would say that these are not isomorphic straight away. Because we're supposed to have rule number three that says that connecting edges will connect the same vertices. But if this edge, if this vertex Q dash over here has four, has degree four, none of the vertices in this network had a degree four, so they can't all be connecting the same vertices, these edges. That means that these two graphs are not isomorphic. Let's have a look at a final network for isomorphic graphs. We're going to start like always. How many vertices and how many edges? I have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. And how many edges? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And nine edges. Remember that the edges do not have to be straight. They can be curved. Let's find out how many degree for each vertex. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Remember, it's just how many roads, I can call them roads, are coming out of each vertex. One, two, three. Oh, they're all three. Great. Now let's have a look at the second network. Let's count how many vertices and how many edges. I have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. Now let's count the edges. The easiest way to do it is just pick probably these three at the bottom and let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I think that counts all the lines. That makes nine edges. So we have the same numbers of vertices and edges. Now I need to have a look at the degree of every vertex in my second diagram. This is degree three, this is degree three, this is degree three, 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 three. So that's pretty good too. Everything matches. Now we've got to make sure that the vertices are all connected by the same corresponding vertices, by the same edge. Maybe I'll colour code this because it's quite complicated. Let's have a look. We know that E connects D. We know that E connects B and E connects F. So E should connect D. B and F. Okay, that's good. So E is safe. He's happy. Let's have a look at C. C should connect D, F and B. So C should connect D, F and B. That's good too. And then my last one that I really need to check is A, isn't it? Because then I've done all the lines. A will connect F, D and B. A will connect F, D and B. So everything's connected. So these two networks are isomorphic. And it did help me when I used different colours to help with rule number three. So maybe when it gets too complicated to just visualise it, get some highlighters and colour in your edges. Well that brings us to the end of the introduction of all the terminology and all the symbols that you need to know so that you can understand what's going on. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe below. See you next time.